The following is a class on the Bhagavad Gita as it is. Second chapter, text number 14, given by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, recorded on the 21st of June, 1974, in Germany. In the previous class, it has been described that being a thing of happy, he commanded you. We are transmigrating from one body to another, exactly like we are passing from a child body to a boy's body, a boy's body to a youth body. Similarly, we are passing through this body also and accepting another body. Now, the question of distress and happiness. Distress and happiness according to the board. A very rich man, he situated little comfortably. The common distress and unhappiness, that is common. What is that common? Janma mitu jarabhyadi dukha dosanga. To take birth either as a dog or as a king, the distress is the same. There is no difference. Because the dog has to keep itself within the womb of the mother in an airtight condition for so many months. The man, either his king or anything, he has also undergone the tool. There is no excuse. Because you are taking birth in a king's family, it does not mean that the, to remain compact within the mother's womb, the distress is less and because he is taking birth in a dog mother's womb, therefore his is great. No. That is the same. Similarly, at the time of death, at the time of death is great distress. It is so strong that one has to leave this body. The time when the distress becomes very strong, one commits suicide. He cannot tolerate. Finish this body. So nobody wants to leave this body. But the distress is so strong that one is forced to leave this body. That is called death. In the Bhagavad Gita you find that Mittu Sarva Harasya Hum. Krishna says that I am dead. And what is the meaning of death? Death means I take everything from you. I take his body, I take his association, I take his country, I take his society, I take his bank balance and everything finished. Sarva haras. Sarva means everything. Everyone is trying to accumulate big bank balance and big house, big family, big motor car, etc. But with the death, everything is finished. So that is great distance. Sometimes one cries, he finds at the time of death in coma, his eye drops are coming up. He thinking, I make so many things so nicely to be comfortably, and now I am losing everything. Great distress. I know one friend in Alava. He was very rich man. So he was only fifty-four years old. So he was requesting crying, doctor. Doctor, can you not give me at least four years to leave? I had a plan. I wanted to finish it. What the doctor can do? That is not possible. Must get out. But these foolish people, they do not know. But we have to tolerate. We have to tolerate. That is advice here. That because we have got this material body, you have to tolerate. To leave within the womb of the mother, then come out, then I cannot speak. Uh, suppose I have a little baby and some worm is biting me, I cannot say, Mother, because at that time I cannot speak, 
something is biting on my back, I'm crying, a mother is thinking that the child is hungry, giving me. Just see, I want this. I want something and I am giving something else. This is fair. Why the child is crying? And he is feeling uncomfortable. Then in this way I grow. Then I do not want to go to school. I am forced to go to school. Yes. I, at least I was like that. <laughs> I, I never wanted to go to school. <laughs> and my father was very kind. Uh, so, you know, all right. So why you are not going to school? I say, I'll go tomorrow. All right. <laughs> so my mother was very careful. Perhaps if my mother would not have been little sick, I would not have gotten any education. My father was very little. So I... She used to force me, one man would take me to school. Actually, children do not want to go to school, they want to play. Against the will of the children, she has to go to school. Then there is examination. Not only going to school, so you study the life from the beginning of this body, within the womb of the mother. It is simply trouble. Against my will. So many distresses are there. So many distresses are there. Then as you grow, the distress grow, grow. Distress is not diminished. Then janma, then old age, then disease. So long you have got this body, the so-called scientists, they are manufacturing very effective medicine. Discovery, new discovery. Test, not discovery. Teptomycin. Eh? So many things. But they cannot stop disease. That is not possible, sir. You can manufacture so many high class medicine to cure disease. That is not cure, temporary relief. But no scientist had discovered any medicine that you take this medicine and no more disease. That is not possible. You take this medicine, no more death. That is not possible. Therefore, those who are intelligent, they know it very well that this place is Dukhalam Asasatam. That is described in the Bhagavad Gita. It is a place for distress. So long he remains here, yeah, but we are so poor. We cannot realize, we accept this life is very pleasant. Let me enjoy it. It is not pleasant at all. Seasonal changes, always. This distress or that distress, this disease or that disease, this uncomfortable, this anxiety, there are three kinds of distresses. Adhyatik, adhibhotik, adhidvai. Adhyatik means Distress says, what is into this body and the mind. And adhidaivi means distresses offered by material nature. Nature. Huh. All of a sudden there is earthquake. All of a sudden there is famine. There is scarcity of food. There is over rain, no rain, huh? extreme heat, extreme winter, extreme cold. We have to go under these distresses, three poles. At least one, two must be there. Still, we do not realize that this place is full of distress because I have got this material body. Therefore, a sane man's duty is how to stop the process of accepting this material body. This is intelligence. He should realize that I am always in distresses. And I am not this body, but I am put into this body. Therefore, right conclusion is that I am not this body. If somehow or other I can live without this body, then my distresses are over. This is common. That is possible. 
देर फोर कृष्ण कहा देर फोर गॉड कहा टू गिव यू द इन्फॉर्मेशन दैट यू आर नॉट दिस बॉडी यू आर दिस सोल स्पिरिट सोल एंड बिकॉज यू आर विद इन दिस बॉडी यू हैव सफर इन सो मेनी दैट फॉर कृष्णा एडवाइस इज दैट दिस दिस प्लेसेस आर ड्यू टू टू दिस बॉडी ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड Why you are feeling pains and pleasure? It is due to the body. That's why Buddha philosophy is also same thing. That you finish this body. Nirman, nirman, nirman means their philosophy is that your feelings of pains and pleasure, uh, it is due to this body. They are accept. Now, what is this body? This body is combination of matter. Combination of Art, water, air, fire, ether, mind, intelligence, ego, eight material elements, five gross and three subtle. This body is made of that. So the Buddha philosophy is that to dismantle this body, nirma, just like this house is made of stone, brick, and wood, and so on. So you break it. There is no more stone and no more brick. Uh, this is distributed to the earth, throwing it on the earth. Then there is no house. Similarly, if you become zero, no body, then you are free from pain and pain. This is that philosophy, nirvan philosophy, sunnavad, make it zero. But that is not possible. That is not possible. You cannot. You are because you are spirit soul. That will be explained. You are eternal. You cannot be zero. That will be explained. No, I am not the Hanuman in Sirir. That we are giving up this body, but immediately I have to accept another body. Immediately. Then where is your question of this mental? By nature's way, you will get another body because you want to enjoy. You have come here in this material world. There is no question of asking. Everyone knows that I am in this material world. I must enjoy to the fullest extent. One who is unaware of the fact that I am going to take another life, he is thinking this is a combination of this matter, earth, water, air, fire. So when it will be broken, then everything will be finished. So so long I have got this opportunity. Let me enjoy to the fullest. This is called material mentality. Atheist, atheist who does not know that we are eternal soul, we are changing body only. They atheist think that after finishing the year in Western country, big big professor, they are all under the same impression that when the body is finished, everything is finished. No, that is not. Therefore, that is the beginning of instruction. Dehi nas min jatha dehi kumar jyumun. You are changing different body by finishing the body. You are not finished. You are not finished. We can understand with little thinking that in this body I am, even in this life, at night I get another body. I drink. I drink. There is tiger. I go to the forest, and there is a tiger, and it is coming to kill me. Then I am crying. Naturally, I am crying. Or in other ways, I have gone to some beloved uh, man or woman. We are embracing, but the bodily action is going on. Otherwise, why I am crying? And why there is discharge of semen? So people do not know that I am living this gross body. But I am entering the subtle body. Subtle body is there, not question of insight. We are fact up. Just like this body is fact up, is heart and coat. So the coat is the gross body, and the heart is the subtle body. So when this gross body is resting, the subtle body is working. The foolish man they cannot understand. That I am compact in some body, either subtle body or gross body. One who is too sinful, very much sinful, he does not get the gross body. He remains in the subtle body, and that is called ghost. 
you have heard, some of you might have seen. Let's go. Ghost means he doesn't get, he's so simple that he's condemned to remain in the subtle body. He does not get the gross body. Therefore, according to daily system, there is Shraddha Sarimani. If the father or relative has not gotten the gross body, by that ceremony he is allowed to accept a gross body. That is Vedic system. So anyway, we can understand that I am sometimes in this broad body and I am sometimes in the subtle body. So I am there, either in the gross body or in the subtle body. So I am eternal. But when I work with the subtle body, I forget this gross body. And when I work with this gross body, I forget the subtle body. So either I accept the gross body or subtle body, I am eternal. I am eternal. Now the problem is how to avoid this gross body and subtle body. That is problem. That means when you remain in your original body, in a spiritual body, and do not come to this gross or subtle body, and that is your eternal life. That is, we have to achieve. This human life is a gift by the nature or by God. Now you realize that you are changing your different condition, distress and happiness being a force to accept some kind of gross and subtle body. That is the cause of your pain and place. And if you get out of this gross and subtle body, remain in your original spiritual body, then you are free from the pain and place. That is called mukti. Mukti, that is a Sanskrit word. Mukti means liberation. No more gross body, no more subtle body. But remain in your own original spiritual body. This is called mukti. Mukti means, it is described in the Bhagavatam, mukti hitva anakharupam sarupena avasthiti. That is called mukti. Anakharupam. Anakharupam means, in other ways, staying or living in otherwise. Otherwise means that I am spirit, soul. I have a spiritual body. But some or other circumstantially, on account of my desire, I get sometimes human body, and sometimes dog's body, sometimes cat's body, sometimes fish body, sometimes demigod's body. There are different eight million four hundred thousand different forms of body. So I am changing according to my desire and according to my infection. Karanam gunasangasya. These are the subtle things. That is the real knowledge of human being. Not to invent something for temporary happiness. That is foolish. That is foolish. Wasting time. If we invent something, for the comforts of this present body, I shall live very comfortably, but you will not be allowed, sir, to live comfortably. First of all, you know, suppose a man is constructing very nice house, very strong house, it will never fall down in any circumstances. Uh, that's all right, but what you have done for yourself, that you will never die, so that you will enjoy this. No, let, let, let me be. Let me have a very strong built house. So house in man she goes up. Strong built nation. This is Napoleon. Constructed strong, strong built arches. But where he has gone, nobody knows. So, therefore Bhaktivano Thakur says, sings, Jarovidya sab mayar bhuyuhav, tomar bhajane bhava. The more we advance, in so-called material uh, happiness, a material advancement, the more we forget our real identity. This is the result. So, we should understand that we have got a separate business, real business, 
that is called self-realization. That I am not this body. This is self-realization. That is being instructed by Krishna in the beginning. You are not this body. The first understanding, first knowledge is to understand that I am not this body, I am spirit soul. I have got a different business. It is not that this temporary actions or activities like as a dog or as a human being or as a tiger or as a tree or as a fish, there are activities. Ahara and Ibdhabhaya and Kumansa, the same principle of bodily necessities, eating, sleeping, such life and defense. But in the human form of life, I have got a separate business, self-realization, to get out of this bodily entanglement, and that is called knowledge. Without this knowledge, anything we are advancing in knowledge, that is foolishness, that's all. Samayi vahi kevala. Samayi vahi kevala. Samayi vahi kevala means simply working uselessly and wasting time. You cannot check the nature's law. Suppose in this life you are very big leader, prime minister and everything, that's all right. But according to your mentality you are creating next life. So in this life you remain a prime minister and next life you become a dog. Then what is the benefit? Therefore these atheist fools, they want to deny next life. That is very horrible for them. Very horrible. If they accept next life, they know that life is very sinful. Then what life they are going to get by the laws of nature? When they think of it, they shudder. Better deny it. Better deny it. Just like a rabbit, enemy is in his corn and he is going to die. But he thinks, let me close my eyes and out of it. <laughs> this is atheistic view. They are trying to forget that there is no life. Therefore they deny. There is no life. Hey, why not? Krishna says that you had a childhood body, you had a very good one. Where is that body? You have left that. You are in different body. Similarly, this body will change. You get another body. And who says? Krishna says the most superior authority. He says. I may not understand, but when he says, this is the process of our knowledge. We accept knowledge from the perfect person. I may be fool, but the knowledge received from the perfect person is perfect. This is our process. We don't try to speculate that may or may not be successful. But if you accept knowledge from the perfect authority, that knowledge is perfect. Just like we are speculating, who is my father? You can speculate, who is your father? But that speculation will not help you. You never understand who is your father. But you go to your mother, the supreme authority, she immediately, here is your father. Yes, sir. And you cannot know father in any other way. There is no other way. This is practical. You cannot know your father without the authoritative statement of your mother. Similarly, things which are beyond your perception, avāṅga manasa bhūcha, you cannot think of, you cannot speak of. Sometimes they say, God cannot be spoken, God cannot be thought of, no? there is all right. But if God Himself comes before you and says, here I am, and where is the divinity? I am imperfect. I cannot know. That's all right. But if God Himself comes before you, so this Krishna consciousness moment is to know everything perfectly from the Supreme Authority Krishna. This is the problem. So Guru Meva Abhigache. In order to understand subject matter which is beyond our perception. You have to approach such authority who can inform you. Exactly in the same way. To understand who is my father is beyond my perception, beyond my speculation. But if I accept the authoritative statement, 
of my mother, this is perfect. So there are three kinds of processes to understand or to advance in knowledge. One is direct perception, and the other is authority, and the other is sruti. Sruti by hearing from the Supreme. So our process is sruti. Sruti means we hear from the highest authority. That is our process. And that is very easy. Highest authority, if he is not in default, and ordinary persons, they are in default. They have got imperfection. The first imperfection is the ordinary man, they commit mistakes. Any great man of the world, we have seen that they come mistakes. And they are illusion. They accept something as reality, which is not reality. They say, we accept this body as reality. This is called illusion. But this is not reality. And so that is reality. So this is called illusion. And then with this illusory knowledge, imperfect knowledge will become teacher. And there is another cheating. They say all these scientists and philosophers, perhaps it may be, the what is your knowledge? It may be, and perhaps, why you are taking the post of a teacher? In future we shall understand, or what is this future? We do accept a post-dated check. In future I shall discover. And therefore I am scientist. What is the scientist? And above all, our imperfectness of senses. This guy you are seeing one another because there is light. If there is no light, then what is the power of my seeing? But these rascals do not understand that they are always defecting and still they are writing books of knowledge. What is your knowledge? We must take knowledge from the perfect person. Therefore, we are taking knowledge from Krishna, the Supreme Person, the perfect person. And he is advising that if you want to stop your pains and pleasure, then you must make some arrangement not to accept this material body. That is advising Krishna. How to avoid this material body? That has been explained. This is the second chapter, in the fourth chapter, Krishna has said that Janma Karma me Dibam Jujana Si Tattata Takka Deham Punar Janma Naiti Mamiti. You simply try to understand the activities of Krishna. This activities of Krishna is there in the history, in the Mahabharata. Mahabharata means greater India. Or greater Bhagavad, Mahavad, history. In that history, this Bhagavad Gita is also there. So he is speaking about himself. He try to understand Krishna. This is our Krishna consciousness movement. Simply try to understand Krishna, his activities. It is not impersonal. Jarma karma means dhirva. Karma means activities. He has activities. Why he is taking part in this world, activities? Why he comes? Jada jada hi dharmasya grani bhavati bharata. Abhutthanam adharmasya. Tadatmanam sijamaham. He has got some purpose, he has got some mission. So try to understand Krishna and his mission and his activities that is sky in a historical form. So what is the difficulty? We read so many things, history or the activities of some leader, some politician. The same thing, same energy you apply for understanding Krishna. Very difficult. Krishna, therefore, he manifests himself with so many activities. 